Wondering what you can get for approximately $315,000 in Columbus's northern suburb of Palo Ohio? I'm going to show you coming up next. Hi, I'm Erin Moore with the Moore Home Team at Key Realty here in Columbus, Ohio. If you're new to our channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button, stay in the know of everything Columbus, its suburbs, and real estate. And if you're looking to buy or sell in the Columbus area, you're in luck. We're real estate agents. Contact us at our information below and we look forward to hearing from you. So the property we're going to be taking a look at today for approximately $315,000 in the Palo Ohio area is a condo. Now, if you're not familiar with the Columbus area, Pal is a northern suburb. It's kind of just right north, northwest of Columbus. It takes approximately 27 minutes to get from downtown Columbus to Pal. Now, things that make Pal really attractive when it comes to purchasing a home, one is its location. Because it's right north, it's right near Interstate 315, 270, it makes it really easy to get around the city to where you're needing to go. Another thing is the schools. The Olentangy school system consistently ranks towards the top of every poll that you look at online. And another thing is Liberty Township. Liberty Township that Powell, Ohio is in is actually one of the wealthiest in all of the country. So that also makes some people look at it as more attractive. And then another little tidbit to know about Powell is actually that's where the Columbus Zoo is located. A lot of people aren't familiar with the exact location of the Columbus Zoo, but it's actually in the Powell area. So let's take a look at the condo for $315,000. And remember to stay with me to the end. We're gonna be discussing what the difference is between a condo versus a single family freestanding home. Here we are outside of the condo. Before we go inside, a couple things to keep in mind is this condo is a two bedroom, two full bath. The square footage is 1,321 square feet. It was built in 1999. Here we are inside the condo and right away you can see the openness that it has. Right directly to the left is one of the things that makes this condo so nice and that's the three season room. Filled with windows, an extra door, a fan for the summertime. Just a really nice extra space to have in this condo. Got a gas fireplace and we'll head here to the First of the two bedrooms, spacious, again, a lot of light that comes in, tall vaulted ceilings, walk-in closet. It's actually a very spacious closet for a condo and a full bathroom with a shower. Now, if this was redone, could look into putting two sinks instead of just one. Let's head back towards the living room and then the dining, really nice light fixture there. The second full bathroom. Now this one also has one sink vanity, but does have a bathtub. And the second bedroom, again, vaulted ceilings. It is sometimes hard to get an idea on video of how large the bedrooms are. Both bedrooms are very large here. And this also has a walk-in closet. And heading out to what makes this condo extra special, and that is this updated kitchen. The previous owner spent around $30,000 to update this kitchen. And I think they did a phenomenal job. The backsplash, the clean cabinets, the appliances, the sink, so much storage space. The granite counters, everything just looks so clean and bright. And here's a better view of the openness that this condo has. And then we're 
gonna head back here to the laundry slash utility room. Even more storage and more cabinets here. And then last but not least, the two car garage, which is great, especially in Ohio with our winners to have a two car garage. Now that we've taken a look at the property, let's get into the differences between a condo versus a single family freestanding home and why you may want to choose one over the other. So a condo, like what we just saw, has a condo owners association fee each month. So what we see in the Powell area is approximately $300 to $500 a month in these condo fees. And now each development is actually very different from another and what they cover in these fees and what's provided in each condo community. So examples of what might be covered is snow removal. So it does snow in Ohio. So snow removal in the summertime, taking care of your lawn. So mowing, landscaping, the exteriors of the condo complexes. Uh, some condo complexes may have a community center with fitness or a swimming pool. Some of the condo fees may also include your trash or your water. It just really depends. Like I said, each condo community is completely different in what it includes and the amount of the fees. And one thing to keep in mind is those condo fees can go up each year. It really depends on the Condo Owners Association. And we always tell everybody to keep in the know of what's going on in your condo association because you do have a vote when it comes towards your association if you've purchased in that community. Now on the flip side, with single family freestanding homes, there are HOA fees. So sometimes communities will have those fees. Uh, they tend to be a lot smaller, but they'll be for common areas or just to make sure that you're not painting your home bright pink or some crazy color <laughs> that stands out from the rest of the neighborhood, it could bring down values. But otherwise, for the most part, you're paying for your own snow removal, your own mowing, the outside of your own home taking care of it. Um, the insurances tend to be a little bit higher on your own single family freestanding home versus a condo because condo complexes most of the time have a master condo insurance document. So you're just buying a walls in document to cover your own personal items. So the insurance can be a little bit less, but on the flip side, you're paying for a single family home. The insurance is for the entire home, including your contents. So those are just a couple things that make it a little bit different. When you think about financing condo versus single family home, there can be quite a difference because you might find that you can afford a little bit more of a single family freestanding home versus a condo because of those condo fees. Now, one other thing might be resale. When you're thinking about resale potential, a condo like the one we just saw doesn't have a basement. So you have a little bit less to worry about flooding of basements or structural issues. Now, not all the time, but a lot of the time, especially in the Powell area, condos tend to be smaller. So they tend to be, the buyers you see more for condos in this area tend to be more of those without families or those looking to downsize in the area versus a single family freestanding home a lot of times is a little bit larger for families or for those that are looking to expand and have a little more space so then when it comes to the condos versus the single family freestanding like i said you're going to really want to pay attention to what serves your needs the best because every individual is completely different to where you are in your time of your life so a condo might fit you better versus a single family freestanding and vice versa. So hopefully this video has helped you understand the differences between both and give you a better insight of what you could afford if you were to move to the Powell, Ohio area. Remember, if you are looking to buy or sell in the Columbus area, we've got your back and we'll see you next time.